Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. All the chords in the F major basic position. Players are F. Guitar players hate the F chord. Oh, we dread the F. The dreaded F. Okay, I'm pretty sure the F chord everybody hates is actually this one, which is a bar chord. That's probably the one that everybody hates. But unfortunately, there are times where you're going to have to use it whether you like it or not because alternate voicings of the F just are not going to work with the tune. Some of these voicings, perhaps, yes, but there is going to be a time where this F is not an option, so you might as well learn it down the road once we get to all these bar chords to drive you nuts, okay? Now, I never did say guitar was easy, did I? Of course not, because, well... It ain't, okay? So, but there is definitely hope with a lot of practice, you can become a really great guitar player, okay? And knowledge is power. And the more knowledge you have, the more power you have, okay, when it comes to music. So the more rounded out of a musician you are, the more you know, the better you're gonna be, Etc. Etc. down the road. And you got a choice of how far you want to take this too, right? I mean, if you just want to play 12 chords, play 12 chords. If you want to play three chords and figure, wow, well, you're the next ACDC, well, that's possible. It can be done, I'm sure. But, however, we're still going to teach you this stuff either way. Now, by now you've learned the F chord, and hopefully you've got that all under control. Because the only F I've taught you guys so far is this F major is a semi bar F so you take your first finger and you slam it down on the two bottom strings here okay so your E and your B and on the first fret then you're gonna go up here and you're gonna go to your second finger on the G string on the second fret and you're gonna go with your third finger on the third fret of the D so to give you a real good personal close look up here okay you're gonna be this finger here then you're gonna go here and then you're gonna go here, like so. All right, and it's gonna look like this. All right, now, for this exercise, don't take your fingers off the fretboard, okay? We're sliding up the neck, okay? And F is only four strings, and so are all these other chords, okay? Just four. Now, remember your fretboard is also dual, so we're gonna call that out as we go. All right, so we have F, we have F sharp, which is also G flat. And we know this because our next chord up is a G, and we go one behind it, it's G flat. Okay, so on G, we slide that up to a G sharp, which is actually A flat, because our next chord up from that is actually an A. And then A becomes, the next part up, becomes an A sharp, which is B flat, okay? And then we go up again from B flat to B, all right? Now I'm gonna show you guys a trick in some later videos that you're gonna find pretty interesting, okay? After B, because B has no sharp, E goes to F, Okay, and we have to start at F, right? But B goes to C next, which is actually a whole step up, right? So B to C. Now, C goes to C sharp, okay? And C sharp, our next chord up is gonna be a D, so that means that C sharp is also D flat, okay? Then we go D sharp, and our next obvious is going to be E. So F, G, A, B, C, and then C sharp, D, D sharp, E. So the in-betweens, F, F sharp is G flat, okay, G, G sharp, A flat, and so on. Just slide them, 
For now, just slide them. And work on some strumming so you can accurately strum just those four particular strings. And go by the majors first. And mix it up. Go to different spots, right? any of your chords it's a really good idea to say them out loud so that you program it into your head you can think of them if you want I find that saying a chord out loud over and over and over and over programs it into my head but while it's programming it into my head my brain is also programming my fingers and my hand position at the same time so I automatically know this is out. And then when I want a B, I know that the B is here. F, G. And then I know that anything behind G, G flat. Okay? If I want to go F, G, A, I need an A flat. I go one behind the A. Gives me an A flat and so on. So you want to say it out. F, G, A. A flat, G flat, okay, etc., etc., all the way up. And everything restarts at the 12th fret again, obviously, as we know, because the 12th fret is actually your second, your starting of your second octave, right? Now, if you have a guitar, uh, mostly found in electrics, obviously, um, a guitar that has 24 frets, that means you have a guitar with two full octaves which opens you up to a lot more than what you have with 20 frets or 21 frets, etc., or 22 frets even. Some uh, Fender guitars have 22 frets, some, but mostly 21, right? So some have that extra fret. It's like, that's one note more. Yes, and that's one ability for another chord too that I wouldn't normally have, okay? So you have some limitations that because of how many frets you have, it does limit your notes total possible and chords total possible. Now, to be honest, there's like over 30,000 chords, but how do we get there? Well, it's not actually in the standard tuning of E, A, D, G, B, E. We have to use alternate tuning modes as well. And there's a list about this freaking long of different tuning modes we can use with our guitars and each tuning mode is going to open us up to a whole new branch level of chords, right? So, and we're not even going anywhere near that stuff for a long time, okay? We want to get you everything we can possibly do for you in the basic mode because the majority of what you are going to likely be playing, depending on who you are and what you're getting out of these videos, you're going to be doing standard tuning, which most people are doing standard tuning for the most part. Now, if you want to play your favorite artist stuff, like a, I'm not sure if it's actually a lot of or everything that John Cougar Mellencamp actually does, but um, what I've heard, um, it's in he he tunes his guitars to E flat. Okay, so um, instead of um, like um, standard tuning E A D G B E, he tunes it all flat, right? And that's how he gets. The sound that he does, still using the same basic chords, right? And I'm not going to play too much of that because YouTube will give me heck. But then you've got this part of uh, one of his songs too. Right? And uh, it sounds better in E-flat tuning. However, vocally I can do it in standard tuning, and I prefer it in standard tuning, and you might too. You don't have to follow an artist's actual key arrangement that they do, right? And you can change your keys easy enough, to a certain point at least, with a capo, right? That comes in handy too, which also opens us up to more advanced chords without having to do the advanced chord position, for example, okay? so. If I have a song in the key of G, okay, like Proud Mary, right? 
but I find that the vocal may not suit my particular voice right, which, by the way, G does. But if I want to go to key of A flat, I just put it here on the first fret, and I play the same exact position, because there's only three chords in the version of the song I have. It's just G, D, E minor positions, right? And now it's A flat, so... So now this becomes... Uh, G becomes a G sharp, which is A flat. D becomes D sharp, which is E flat. Okay, and then you got your E minor, okay, which becomes an F, right? Not an F major, but it's an, it's an F minor. So it goes E minor because there's no sharp. It goes E minor to F uh, minor automatically because it's a minor chord position, right? So. Right? And to me, A flat doesn't work for me. It really honestly doesn't, right? So, gee, it is, right? But you can, you can change the key of a song to any key you want. So you can change any song to any key you want, but there is a point where a dumpster dies, okay? So if you're basically screwed with the G position and you're already up here and you're still trying to do Proud Mary, and you might be able to do it, I couldn't, right? So it's kind of like, not a chance. I can't go that high, right? Okay, so I could do that to, you know, I'm not even trying right now, by the way, and this is early morning. Your voice changes, by the way, during the day, and early morning for me, I kind of suck at singing, so yeah, don't worry about it. But, you know, and getting that rhythm down tight too, you know. Learning a song, um, the other thing I wanted to throw into this video, we might as well, is learning songs. Um, a lot of the songs you're going to print out from the internet, basically, what you're going to end up getting, unless you're paying for your music, is this for guitar players. And technically, well, that's all you need, to be honest. You know how the song goes, and you're going to learn the song by ear. You play along with the song on YouTube, for example. Like, that's, um, that's Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen. song I've never learned... Also, didn't even know that it was two chords, only for the whole song. And it's like, well, I also never learned the song, so that explains everything there. Um, I was looking up for a pile of two chord songs for uh, one of my students uh, yesterday, and I come across, oh, Born in the USA. Uh, that'd be great if we have somebody that I'm teaching that plays electric right now, which I do have one student that is playing electric for now. Um, and it's just B and E. And it's like, okay, well... I know where my B is, and I got this E, or I can use this E, or other E's too. Like, can you actually go G, D, there? Well, yeah, I can play E here, right? There's multiple places with the same chords, uh, just different voicings of them, right? And it's what works as well, you know? Not all voicings are going to work for every song. But you can change things to your liking. Um, like, if you, you have the F chord... Right, and your key, and your song is in the key of F. Now F is going to have a B flat in it. It's also going to have a C seven in it in, in that key. Right now, you can also just so you know, take your capo, put it on the fifth fret, play a C formation. That's your F. You're also in the key of F here on the fifth fret. We have some uh, songs actually at church that are. Um, on my iPad, because it's the database from our worship leader, he has it listed as 5C app, which means, well, the, 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 the song uh, actually is in, in like written in C, but we use the capo on the fifth fret, which puts it into the key of F, right? So uh, I don't like that pitch. It's too pitchy for my particular voice. He seems to be able to get to that pitch, but... And I can, but I kind of really don't like it because some parts I kind of sound like a little girl. So what I tend to do is I opt out and I ditch the capo, okay? And I throw the F down here, which is the same voicing, actually, as our piano player is doing. So she's doing this, this pitch of the F, right? And then I just got to remember, oh, I got that friggin' power chord B flat to do. I got to have a C7 to do, you know? And uh, C7, I gotta tell you, is not my favorite chord, to be honest. It sounds nice, but it's not actually not one of my favorite chords, especially when I'm going F to B flat to C7. It's, and if you gotta do it quickly, it can throw you off at times. 
Um, I tend to prefer playing those uh, particular modes on electric guitar. I find it a lot easier in my, my hands because there's a lot of pressure when you do a power chord. Okay, um, this, this chord for the F is not bad, right? But this, that's, that's a lot of extra pressure and then you gotta go from, from the B flat into the C7, right? And rather quickly, depending on the song you're playing, you got the time, then it's an easier transition. But some of the songs we're doing in the in the key of F or five C F, okay, not so simple, okay. But so that's where if I don't feel like singing a song, but I just want to play it, I could go here. But the problem is, is if we're both in the exact same position, our strumming patterns have to more or less match up, except for some of the breaks we get in the song. I'll do some fancy stuff. Um, and that can work. So if I stick to my fancy and I stick to basically offsetting slightly on the rhythm, okay, so I gotta keep the same timing, right? Same beats per minute. I can get away with this stuff, right? Otherwise, yeah, pitch the capo. I can do it here too. But doing fancy stuff on the B flat, it's like, no! Right? So you pick and choose your battles um, when it comes to your, your keys that you're playing in, capo, no capo. And you gotta remember your chord knowledge too. How much chord knowledge do you have and how well can you execute it, right? So that's another thing where capos, especially for beginners, they're a godsend. It's like, thank you Lord for the capo. You've done a wonderful job. All right, so we can like go up into here on the third fret, put something in the key of B flat, right? And just. Playing advanced chords, but without having to do the advanced chord positions, okay? And you're getting an alternate voicing of these same chord, too. It's another reason why there's like 30,000 freaking chords, and you're like, ow! This is ow! All right, so that's enough of that for today. So hopefully, uh, F, G, A, B, and all the in-betweens. Work on those. Have some fun with that. I do like to give extras during a video, which I'm sure you've figured out by now. I do the same thing with my students here live when I'm teaching people face to face. You know, I give them the extras, right? Um, just, it gives them something to think about. It's more encouraging to go, hey, you know what? There's a lot more to this than like, you know, seven chords or seven notes. Cause you only got like A, B, C, D, F, G, right? But then you got all the variations and then you've got the sharps, you've got the flats, you've got the diminished, you've got the augmented, you've got the suspended. And, and the seconds, and oh my gosh, the list, right? So, and you're gonna learn a lot over the years. And you may not always remember stuff, but you can always go back to my YouTube channel where you're learning this stuff from, and go over these lessons over and over to your heart's content, um, and you'll continually pick up. Plus you can pick up books too. Learn from some books for chord chart books, right? There, there's a lot of chord chart books out there that are, you know, some of them are little basic folders. Um, something like, well, let me uh, get this out for you. You got these, which are very common, right? And they give you some basic and advanced chords. Not that there's a ton here, but there's a lot more chords than this. That's for darn sure, right? Um, but these are good little charts to get you going with because they're beginner chords on one side your some of your advanced chords on the other uh, it gets into talking about key signatures right what chords are in each key but just remember theory's not written in stone here okay because if you look at the key of g for example g c and d7 is the three principal majors well you know what d7 doesn't always work in the key of g especially vocally depending on the word because words do dictate chords so you need to pull out a d not a d7 Okay, or you could go with G, C, and A minor, for example. Okay, so let me just do that and then we're out of here. G, C, A minor, C, A minor, C, G. If you're still playing in the key of G, you don't use, you don't have to use all six chords. You don't have to use all three principles and all three relative minors you can just pick and choose right that's why we have two chord songs or you could be 
G A minor. And you can break that up to finger pick it or you can individual pick it. Whatever you want to do, right? That's why it's not written in stone when it comes to that stuff. They're guidelines only, okay? They are not written in stone. But an A is an A, B is a B, C is a C, and so on. I mean, there are things that are written in stone. We'll talk more about theory in another video, because um, I'm sure that's enough for today anyway. So thanks so much for watching and hanging out for these videos. Don't forget the playlist. We do have quite a number of videos now. Um, and do check out other videos on my channel if you so want to do that. So see ya.